Hey everyone, my name is Nick and welcome back. Finally, Devlog10 is here. Um, so I have a few updates for the game that I want to go over with you, as well as talk about my experience using the Godot engine over the past sort of six or seven months. Um, I think it's been seven months since I first uploaded my uh, first Godot engine devlog, and uh, it's been a really good experience, and I'm actually really glad I chose Godot as my sort of first engine to get into game development. But uh, anyway, let's take a look at some of the updates, and then I'll talk about my experience. All right, drum roll, please. Mystic Meadow is the name of the game. <laughs> Hopefully that isn't terrible. Um, this game is really a sort of proof of concept or a prototype for other things that I have in mind and something that I made in order to teach myself the engine. So I'm not too concerned. Hopefully that name isn't taken, but I think it works pretty well. The first major feature is, of course, the title screen. Um, so basically I drew a mock-up in Inkscape and then tried to recreate that mock-up in the Godot engine. And the actual sort of title screen in the engine is a little bit different than my mock-up, but uh, that's okay. I think it works pretty well. Um, I'm probably going to change some of the wording of the buttons, I think. But uh, for now, it works, and that's what's important. Um, so this title screen is now the sort of main scene that runs when you go to Project Settings and Run. So I'm just using the exact same scene changer that I'm already using. So when you click on New Game, it fades out and then fades into the home screen and then works as normal. And as far as credits go, uh, as I mentioned, I'm probably going to change the wording to about or something like that. But I just want to have a pretty simple scene that explains that this game is kind of a prototype. It's the first game I've ever made and uh, redirects people to my YouTube page. Has a little bit of a little bit of promotion, I think. But uh, anyway, I think it's nice and simple. It's all I need for this game and uh, gives me a good idea of how to create these things in the future. So the scene itself. It's basically constructed of all my sort of background elements, which I've just reused from previous scenes. Uh, the menu itself is a color rect, which sort of forms the background for the actual buttons. And then the buttons themselves are just texture buttons, which are really cool because they allow you to set all different kinds of states for the button, like if you're hovering or if they're focused via keyboard or something like that. And it's pretty simple to do. I also have, as you may have seen, some animation running on the actual sort of menu border. Just a little modulate that makes it look like a little rainbow pattern is playing. But uh, I might add something a bit more complicated, but I think that just gives it a little bit more focus. And next up, in terms of new features, we have a dialogue system finally. When your player character's area 2D overlaps any of the other characters, a little icon will pop up indicating that you can actually speak to that character. And then when you press the action key or whatever that key is, um, it'll trigger the little dialogue scene. And initially I was having a problem where if you talk to one of the characters, both of their dialogue would pop up. So I kind of solved that problem by pausing the sort of physics processes on the character you're not speaking to. So the player already has a sort of interaction detection area 2D. And whenever you're overlapping with a character you can speak to, it actually will search through that character looking for the method speak. And that's how it triggers the dialogue. So in the case where the character has the method speak, it pulls the dialogue from a dictionary using a counter to iterate through that dictionary. Um, so it's a pretty simple dialogue system. I'm not exactly sure if it's the most efficient means of uh, implementing a dialogue system, but it works. And I think this game overall is going to be kind of simple. So as long as it looks like it functions properly, I think I'm okay with it for now. So at this point, since I have my title, I have, I think, all the major systems in place, like dialogue, being able to interact with items, being able to pick things up, sort of using the exact same 
area 2D that detects for an overlap. Um, now I just have to put all the pieces together <laughs> into something that resembles a game. Um, so I'm not too finalized on the story or anything like that yet, but it's not going to be very long. Uh, and it's going to have some twists, I think, as many as I can fit in like a half hour long game or something like that. But I'm excited to put all the pieces together and actually weave something into uh, something that is playable. So uh, in terms of what I need to do next, I still need to add some UI prompts. For example, when you pick up your note in the beginning, like how do you access it and stuff like that. I think I'm going to integrate that right into the scene itself rather than have like um, all the UI listed in a menu somewhere but uh, also need to do sound effects, and I think that might be kind of fun because I'm going to try to do all my own sound effects. Uh, music I'm not too sure about because that might take a little bit longer than I want it to, but I might be able to do something simple um, and uh, implement that hopefully relatively quickly, although who knows. Anyway, it's been a pretty good experience so far and I'm really close to being finished so I'm getting excited. In terms of my overall experience using the Godot engine, I've had a really great time, I think. Um, my transition from web development into game development has been pretty smooth, I think, and I think that's due to the ease of using GDScript, which is a lot like Python, which I've sort of used in the past, but not for any real projects. Um, but uh, overall, the sort of node and scene system I find really intuitive, and there's just so many helpful YouTube tutorials out there that will help you get past any places that you get stuck with. A um, couple of the things that I've found tricky so far are things like accessing nodes in different scenes from other scenes. Um, it took me a little while to just sort of get comfortable with that and figure out how to do that. Just by going through the documentation and asking questions on Godot's forum, um, I find that's also very helpful. A lot of the questions I've had, somebody else also had, and so just searching on the Godot forum um, was a really helpful uh, sort of way of dealing with whatever problems I ran into. And uh, another thing that I found kind of tricky was using call deferred and set deferred. So I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out, but call deferred just means defer the call of a method. <laughs> and set deferred just means defer setting a parameter. I don't know why it took me so long, but uh, anyway, those are really useful. Um, but I didn't really find anything as I was going through any of the tutorials that sort of explained that to me in, uh, I think, as clear a way as it could have been explained, or maybe I just missed it or something like that, but that took me a while to figure out, um, even though it might not have taken you that long. So another thing I think that's going to be somewhat tricky coming up is saving and loading data. Uh, I think that's probably kind of tricky regardless of whatever engine you're using or whatever sort of software development thing you're working on. But um, since there's no one set way to do it, I think it's going to require me to actually learn some more coding principles. And I think that's really the biggest barrier that I've had so far is I've actually had to improve my understanding of how to code itself. And I've definitely used more coding techniques um, while getting into game development than I have when I was, or I'm still doing web development, but I've definitely been using more of what programming is in game development than web development. Thankfully, as I mentioned, the documentation and the forum Q&A is pretty good. And uh, one thing I've noticed is that whenever I'm watching a YouTube tutorial, I'll often come across something that I wasn't even looking for that ends up being useful. So some piece of code or some technique for creating or doing something in Godot that I wasn't even thinking about um, while trying to learn something else entirely, and I'll end up incorporating that into what I'm working on. So. Even if you're not looking for anything particular, I think it's helpful to just watch tutorials and watch how other people solve certain problems, and you'll end up learning something that you might be able to might be able to apply to your own game. So I'm really glad I got into this, and uh, it's been a really great experience just sort of putting all my creative abilities together into game development, and I think game development is one of those creative pursuits that does allow you to sort of weave everything together. Like if you're into music production, that's involved in game development. If you're into art or illustration, that's obviously involved in game development. Coding, obviously involved. So it's just kind of cool to be on all aspects of the creative process and bring those things all together. Um, definitely difficult. It's more difficult than web development, I think. Um, well, maybe because I wasn't really that good at web development to begin with, but it just requires me to flex all my muscles at once and I, I think that's good for my own sort of personal growth and development as a creative person and I highly recommend anyone who's interested in 
game development to just give it a try, and the Godot engine I think is a great place to start. Alright everyone, thank you for watching, hope you liked that, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks!